Alright, hey everyone, and welcome to Metal Gear Solid 4. This, along with my other three Metal Gear Solid runs, will be an extreme speedrun going for a big boss rank. We'll see if my old MGS proness is still there. Who is David Hayter? Accomplished actor, screenwriter, voice of a These are sort of weird ass commercials before the game starts. This is probably my favorite one, so we'll just watch this. Comfortable childhood in Canada, thrown into the turbulent waters of adolescence in Kobe, Japan. How did you stay afloat? You mean you mean in high school? Uh well my dad got uh, transferred overseas and um it was a really excellent experience, actually. I, uh, I was really grateful for it. Grateful. What is your biggest secret, David? Pardon me? You can tell us. Oh, well, it's not much of a secret, but I, um, uh, I have a tattoo of Kobe behind my ear. Tattoo? Splendid! Yeah, it's... I mean, it's not terribly big. <laughs> what are you wearing? What do you mean? Why are you here? Oh, well, I was hoping to promote my new movie. I'm just coming off of the set. No, David Hayter. Why here, wearing an eye patch? Oh, the eye patch. Uh, this is pretty cool, actually. It gives me uh, uh, real-time information and, and uh, you know, weather, traffic reports. Um, actually, watching a baseball game as we, uh, as we speak. <laughs> what? drives you. What are your dreams? Uh, well, you know, I'd have to say my dream project... Let your dreams drive you. Oh, a message of hope to today's young people from David Hayter. Mm. I never actually said that. For those of you who don't know, David Hayter is like the voice actor for Snake. Yeah, these commercials really have no relevance at all with the story. Well, I guess they kind of do. A lot of them are just commercials for the private military groups that we'll encounter throughout the game. And now we can start the game. Of course, this is going to be a speedrun, so that means I'm going to skip all the cutscenes. So if you're hoping to see the story on this playthrough, then my apologies, because you won't see much of it. Only like the first second of each cutscene. To make a weapon available for use, ready it by selecting weapons from the menu screen. On this part, you can be spotted by these gecko. That's what those miniature Metal Gear looking things are. You can be spotted by those and it won't count against you if you're going for a big boss rank. An interesting thing about this game is that it could possibly be the easiest one to get the best rank on and that is because there is not a limit on saves. Like for the first game I don't remember how many saves you can have. I want to say 25. That's probably way off. I don't remember exactly, but I know it's a lenient amount. Especially on 3. I think 3 might have been 25. For Metal Gear Solid 2, to get a big boss rank, you can only save, I believe, 8 times. So that's a little bit rougher. But for 4, you can save on every damn screen if you want to. I'm going to try and get one act done per session. So I'll stop after Act 1, and next time pick up with all of Act 2, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. 
You can even skip all the codex scenes with just one button. Pretty nice. Hopefully I'll remember what to do still. It has been a while. You can't skip this cutscene if you're wondering. You can get spotted there, so be careful. I just kind of take unnecessary risks and roll. Avoid unnecessary combat whenever possible. In this war, neither side is your enemy. There's no point whatsoever in you getting into a fight. Got it? Besides, that would go against our big boss rank. And we can't have that. So far, so good. I think you got him, guys. Go away now. We just murdered a man. Cue the happy music. Yeah, for his octo camo, you can press against any surface and you'll kind of chameleon your way into having that camouflage. Pretty helpful, really. It's a lot better than the system they had in 3, at least in my opinion. Well, it's kind of the same, vaguely, but it's just a lot quicker. No need to have to go through any menus and select what camo you want. I'm going to get you, boy. Old ass man crawling behind you. <laughs> Don't tase me, bro. Uh. You can pick up guns dropped by both the militia and the PMCs. Remember though, PMC weapons are locked. You can't use them. If only there was some way to get rid of the locks. If only. If you're using this guide to get a big boss rank, then I would just follow my movements. I don't really have to explain to you what I'm doing every step of the way, do I? I tried to roll just then, but Snake decided to lay down instead. Snake, press the crawl button while running to execute a roll. Rolling can help you dodge enemy attacks and get past small gaps and obstacles. Otacon, what's the crawl button? Hoya! Tased with my knife. This part can be pretty annoying, but if you follow my movements, it should go pretty smoothly. That's assuming that I make it. That's right. Return to your positions. No, you're not. It helps if this guy sees me, yeah. And now he'll hopefully run away. Awesome. That means I won't have to deal with him. This ring around me shows, like, the locations of enemies. Like the raised up part in front of me means there's an enemy over there. Looks clear enough. Don't turn around. Yay, we made it. Awesome. Now we get a tranquilizer gun, which will make things a whole lot easier. And a little Mark II robot, which will also come in handy.